Hi everyone, Nick with Able Cine here. Today we're going to have a look at the recently released firmware for the Panasonic EVA-1, version 2.02. This new firmware adds a number of hotly anticipated features, not the least of which are all-eye or intra-frame record modes, a little bit more support for some high frame rate options including 4K at 120 frames per second, uh, as well as the ability to output raw data utilizing the sensor's native 5.7K resolution or 4K at 60p. So if you're taking advantage of an external recorder like this Atomos Shogun Inferno that I've got up here, you can really take that recording to the next level. We're going to have a look at the process of updating the firmware as well as the menu locations of a few of these features. Now if you haven't done one of these uh, firmware updates before, one of the important things to keep in mind is that if you lose power in the middle of a firmware update, it can be very dangerous for your camera. So I always recommend that you use the AC power supply that came with the camera rather than relying on battery power. Once you've got the firmware downloaded from Panasonic's website, all you need to do is extract it to the root directory of an SD card that you've already formatted in the camera. I'm going to load this in here and then we'll have a look. Once you've loaded the SD card with the firmware update into the camera, you'll press the menu button go into the system settings, down to information, down to update, and then to yes. Provided that you've placed the update file in the root directory of the SD card, it should display your old version of your firmware as well as the version of the firmware of the update that you have on that card. Now you can see mine matches, I've already performed this update, so we're going to skip the process, but all you need to do from here is go up to set and press the button one more time and it will begin the update process. Again, it's very important that you don't cut power at any point during this process to make sure there's no damage to your camera. Now most of the new settings you're going to find right here in the system settings menu, where you'll go in to set the main record modes for the camera. So if we dive into that menu and into system mode, you'll see that we have all of the same options that we've previously had, as well as the ability to select the main codec with much higher quality, that all I or 400 megabit per second uh, compression. Compared to the old 422 long op max of 150, it's a pretty big change. Now one thing that's important to note, you should check the SD cards that you're using, uh, is not all SD cards are going to have a high enough speed to be able to record in this mode. So it's very important to make sure that you have the right class to match up with what you have here. If you don't, the camera will kick up a warning that tells you an incompatible SD card once you've selected this record mode. Now if we wanted to output RAW, we have that ability here as well. Just bear in mind that when we do that, it is disabling the internal recording capability. We've got the ability to send it out full native 5.7K or a slight crop down to 4K as well. So we're going to go ahead and send that to our Shogun now. Again, as I mentioned, that locks us out of being able to record any internal codecs as we're using all of that bandwidth to send that information to the external recorder. A brief note on using your external recorder to record the RAW, you're going to want to make sure that that's also on the latest firmware and for an Atomo Shogun Inferno, that's going to be 9.0 or later. Remember that when you're sending RAW, you're sending RAW data, not an actual video. So if you want to be able to view it in the same V-Log Gamma settings that you're used to seeing in the camera, you'll need to load some LUTs that Atomos have made available that will convert that RAW data to V-Log with the appropriate color temperature. And keep in mind too, you don't have to record this as data, though Atomos gives you the option to pull that down in a Cinema DNG format, or in the new ProRes RAW format, you can also have the recorder convert that to a DNxHR or a ProRes HQ or other compressed format. So that about wraps it up. The new features added by this firmware definitely take this small, compact, run-and-gun capable camera and now make it possible to scale it to just about any level of production. We hope you found this video enjoyable and the content useful. And as always, stay tuned to Ablecine for lots more videos like this. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.